Welcome to the underground, you rebel scum. This is the American Expat. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Minolta SRT100, a single lens reflex camera released by the Minolta Camera Company back in 1971. For those of you who are familiar with the SRT line, it's basically an SRT 101 without all the bells and whistles. Well, today, we're going to be taking a look at the capabilities of this camera and then taking it out into the field to see how it performs in real life after all these decades. But before we do that, I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. So stick around. We'll be right back. Thanks for sticking with us. So, Minolta a camera company that you may or may not have heard of, depending on how young you are or how recent you got into the whole camera business. Now, in the last video, we talked about Nikon, how they got their start in post-war Japan. And by war, I'm talking about World War II, the only war that probably really matters to modern Japan. Well, Minolta got started long before that, 1928. We're talking pre-war Japan. And they continued on making cameras through all of that, all the way up until the digital age. In fact, they pioneered a lot of the features that we see on modern DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, uh, a lot of that having to do with autofocus technology. In fact, if you're using a Sony camera, as I am to record this right now, you're actually using the descendant of Minolta's, I guess, last cameras, kind of. Yes, for sure, because Sony bought them. Yes, uh, in 2006, Sony purchased that division of Minolta and they decided they were done with cameras from 1928 all the way to 2006 and then that was it. They were done. Now let's have a look at this old camera here. The first thing you're going to notice about the SRT100 is how solid it is. I mean, it's pretty much all metal construction. You feel it in your hand. It's like a brick, which is actually a good thing because, you know, it probably won't break so easily. Don't go dropping it though. I feel like with the weight of the thing would probably crush itself. But yeah, a pretty solid camera. I'm, you know, can be used for self-defense as well as taking photos. Now I mentioned that this is like a basic model of the SRT 101. If you look on the top here, you can see that the uh, the shutter speed only goes to 1 500th of a second as opposed to 1 1000th that you would get with the uh, the 101. Boy, that kind of makes me think of the... Never mind. That, that's something else movie-related. You'll also notice on the front it lacks a, a self-timer. So I guess no selfie mode. At least none that's actually going to work. Uh, such as selfie mode. It, it wasn't called selfie mode. It was just a timer. You set it up on a tripod and you set the little thing and it goes zzz and then click. And boom, you got a picture of yourself. Hopefully you're in focus because this is all manual focus stuff but uh, you know that's how selfies were back in the day now as i said it's lacking all of these sort of things but it really isn't going to hold you back if you have one of these cameras for photography purposes i mean we're not uh, well you maybe you are but i'm not uh, photographing you know like race cars going by or jet planes or something like that so one 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 five hundredth of a second perfectly good enough i mean the rest is just going to be up to the film that you put inside. And today I happen to have a roll of the Fujifilm 200. Yes, I'm going with a, a finer grain, I hope, for today's photos than what we used in the last one. I'm, I'm hoping that will improve the image quality. I thought the images were okay, but, uh, you know, the thing picks its own settings. I, I don't really like that. It turns out not the way that I had imagined, but it could have been the film and it, it was probably me as a photographer but just the same we've got this stuff instead of the fujifilm 400 so let's take it out on the road and let's see what this thing can do it's shaping up to be a beautiful day i always like to have some clouds in the sky for taking photos i mean instead of just a blue sky sure it can make getting the exposure tricky with changing lighting but it makes the photos look so much more interesting now our ultimate goal is to get to the New River Gorge and take some photos of the bridge. But there's a few places along the way to stop and take photos. I'm stopping at the Kanawha Falls before we continue on our way. For 
more than a million years, this little waterfall, it's only 24 feet high, has stopped the spread of fish species in its tracks. Imagine that, being stuck for a million years because of a 24-foot waterfall. The local communities get electrical power from the waterfalls as well. It's no Niagara, but it's still interesting in its own way. Now let's get on to our main objective. You may have seen the bridge before, it's sort of famous. When it was finished being built in 1977, it was the highest roadway bridge in the world. It held the record until 2001 when China came along and beat it. I actually think I've driven over the road, and the, or the bridge in China that beat the record. And here we are. These walkways always look nice on film. And there's the bridge itself. Great photo. There's more to see of the bridge if you follow the road down below. And the trees and leaves make a nice frame for the steelwork of the bridge. And just a couple hundred feet from there, you get this image lovely photo. I've still got film left, so we're heading to the city of Huntington, West Virginia. Huntington is the second largest city in West Virginia. It was originally called Holderby's Landing, but when the railroad came to town, it took on the name of one of the railroad's founders. In either case, it has some old photogenic buildings. parked on the street. Why not? A memorial of some kind, I'm guessing. Looks nice. The old theater looks interesting. Crossing the street. A somewhat tall brick building. There's only one photo left, so I'm having my break today and starting on the three-hour drive up to Columbus, Ohio to get the photos developed and scanned. To my knowledge, and I've done a lot of digging, there are not photo labs in all of West Virginia. So I've been taking my film to McAllister Photo Works to get them done. They've been pretty good about it. Every time I've dropped off the film, they have it done and scanned within an hour. It's too bad they're, a, they're not a bit closer to home. And we're back. Well, what did you think? Did it do better than the last one with the Nikon EM? I was kind of impressed by the way the photos turned out. Of course, it may have been the difference in the film. You know, we were using the, the Fujifilm 400. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Don't don't get too mad at me. I'm, I'm sorry. But uh, this time we're using the Fujifilm 200. Fujifilm, Fuji 200 in this uh, camera. And also, you know, I was completely in control of all the settings on this instead of, you know, having the primitive 70s computer making decisions for me on shutter speed and all of that. So that may have played a role. I don't think of myself as being the most incredible photographer in the world, but I know the basic controls of the camera and what they do. So maybe that made a difference. Who knows? You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. I, uh, while I was out there, I did stop and pick up another camera that I'm going to have to test in the, this uh, upcoming video later on. I've got uh, a point-and-shoot camera, the Nikon One-Touch LF35-something to... The internet says it's a great camera. I, I'm not sure about point-and-shoot cameras, but this one has some autofocus and different things so we'll, we'll give it a try we'll run some nice film through it and see how it holds up if it actually works at all and uh, that'll be in a future video so you can look forward to that again let me know in the comments did these photos turn out better i i would i think that it's a solid camera i think it worked out you'll have again let me know i better stop here we'll see you guys in the next one